Facebook. We are going live on Tuesday with Tammy and sometimes Tom. He's behind the camera right now, but here he comes. Hello, everyone. So we are in a different venue. Did you yeah. notice we're not in the kitchen? Yeah, I got to get the computer thing fired okay. up here for the. I'm going to get the chat turned on. So if you have comments or hellos or where you're from, please jump in with those. Yeah, or if you have a question, because we'll take some Q and A's today, and we'd be happy to try and answer your questions as well. So we thought that um, we it was beautiful here today in Northern California. And so Tom said, hey, why don't we set up outside since you don't need the kitchen for today's session. So if you're just joining us for the first time, usually on Tuesdays, we do this live YouTube called Tuesday with Tammy and sometimes Tom. I am a whole food plant based educator and I share videos and recipes and hints and tips on doing a whole food plant-based lifestyle as well as weight loss. So we're really happy that you joined us. Click on like and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any future YouTube videos. So the big news this week for those of us in the plant-based community was the movie last night. So I'm just wondering how many of you went to James Cameron's Game Changers. Tom and I were there. We absolutely loved it. You know, the unique thing about this particular movie slash documentary was that they weren't focusing on health issues. And that was kind of refreshing. Instead, they took the point of view of athletes. So elite athletes who are in incredible condition and already super physical and doing amazing things. And then those people transitioned to a whole food plant-based lifestyle and things got even better. So that was actually really exciting to see. And I think it will have appeal to perhaps a whole different new audience, which is pretty exciting as well. I think it will appeal to the millennials, uh, you know, because they're not thinking about health issues unless they've already discovered one. Um, it seems like a lot of people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s who are either looking at their mortality or they're facing some pretty big health issues and looking for alternative ways to treat it are the ones that are uh, oftentimes coming to the whole food plant-based community. So it's just kind of exciting that they are profiling all these amazing athletes and what a difference it can make if they change their food that they're, they're eating. What and, did you want to add to that? Oh, name? Angelina says that, that their theater was full. And um, uh, Julie said that she made it uh, and they really enjoyed it. Their theater was also sold out. Our theater was actually sold out, but... We can have to talk to some people because uh, <laughs> a number of people didn't show up. Yeah, there were a lot so. of empty seats, but it was like when we bought our tickets a long time ago, it was already like half sold out. And so we figured, oh, the theater is going to be packed last night. And then a whole lot of people didn't come. But, you know, life happens. And sometimes you can't make things that you had intended to attend to. So... That's exciting. Okay, well, I'm going to show them a couple things. Oh, well, we're unless gonna, you do, you have more to say about the game changers. You know changers? what? I was messing with the computer when you were talking, so oh, I'm not well, sure of everything that you covered. Oh well, so, I, I was talking about how it was refreshing that it was about about people who are already well and doing great, and the athletes and the elite athletes, and even though they're already incredible, perform having incredible performances, adopting a whole food plant based lifestyle gave them even greater yeah, performances. Yeah, the takeaway I got was that everybody's sense of personal possibilities mm -hmm. uh, was expanded beyond their expectations mm -hmm. or beyond what they had imagined. Uh, they're the strongest, I guess, I, I guess we could call them the strongest man in the world, uh, lifting more weight than has ever been lifted by a human being before. Um, a, an Olympic bicyclist that was on the Olymp Olympic team at age 39. Nine. Um, and you know, one of the one of the oldest participants in the Olympic Games representing the U.S. Right. Um, 
football players, football teams with, with over a dozen players adopting a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Uh, just all of the amazing possibilities and how people were surprised about the amount of, of physical endurance, capability, perseverance that they had available to them after they adopted a whole food plant-based diet. You know, Tammy and I are hikers. The idea of, of, the, of a gentleman that ran the Appalachian Trail, which usually takes three and a half, four, three and a half to four and a half months, depending on your pace, we would probably be four and a half months at our speed. Uh, did it in 43 days, beat the world record, not by three minutes, but by three hours. It's amazing. So it's a serious, you know. And he was no young kid either. No, he wasn't. So it, it was quite different than uh, you know, other good videos that we've seen. You know, we've seen all of them, like many of you. Uh, they had all been tending with people that were ill or are suffering from uh, obesity or, or one of the type of debil debilitating diseases caused by the standard American diet. This really opens it up into the possibilities. What can you do uh, if you allow your body to function at its maximum best? So quite, you know, a, quite a bit different spin. Uh, uh, Mr. Cameron did come on in the end and talk a bit more about. Oh, yeah, how many of the, you stayed for the after show? Yeah, the politics. I do, I, people are commenting and I'm not watching. Okay. Um, so that was interesting. He, he got into a little bit of the, the, the you know, governmental, the political side, the, how you know, commerce scene tends to turn a blind eye to the real issue in terms of health care and so forth. So, so I enjoyed that part as well, the after show show. Yeah, so a lot of people are saying beautiful backyard. Thank you so much. You know, we live in the city, but we chose this lot because there is this nature preserve right here next to us and there's a pond and there's ducks and there Canadian geese come and it, sometimes it gets quite noisy so we'll see what happens hopefully it'll remain quiet um, but we really love it because we're both from the Midwest and we were used to wide open spaces and green and so to live in California and to be able to have this uh, right next to us but yet still live in the city is just fantastic so I wanted to just show you a couple things. One is a kitchen hack that I've been using. So you know if you follow us that we love the California balsamic vinegars. And in fact, we were just talking to Thomas right before we went live today. And he's the owner of California Balsamics. And he has the most amazing customer service ever and the most incredible flavors for his vinegars and in particular we like the sweet heat that's one of our real favorites and the Gilroy garlic and I love the Simply Lemon and the dill and mustard seed. Have you even tasted the dill and mustard seed? I actually don't think I have. I, I think I'm the only one that's been using yeah, that. Yeah, I tend to head straight for the sweet heat or the Gilroy garlic. Yeah, and um, I like to use those two together too. The you know I like to mix two of them sometimes like on my chopped salads, I'll do drizzle a little you bit of the Gilroy. You mix the Italian seasons with the Hispanic seasons, seasonings? No, they, can, they go together. They go okay. really, so Gilroy garlic, I'll spread some of that, you know, drizzle that over my chopped salad, and then I'll do a little bit of the sweet heat, and that is so delicious. So anyway, um, so his vinegar bottles don't have a pour spout on them, and so we've bought some on Amazon, some little um, pour spouts that fit down in the vinegar bottles. And we have a link to those on our Amazon page. But another thing that I've been doing is I've been taking the little, am I close enough? Can they see anything? Oh, let, Probably let, not. The, I let can you. reach further. You can reach further. You've got a longer arm. It's the little slotted cap that comes into the store bot on the store bot bottles. This yeah, one. that's good. This is off of the... Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve uh, vinegar bottle. And so any vinegar bottle that has one of those little pour spouts, when it gets empty, then I just pop this out with a little kitchen knife and wash it. And guess what? It fits perfectly on Thomas's bottles from the California balsamic vinegar. And yes, we have talked to him about them. He doesn't have a vendor for them. Yeah, he doesn't have a, a source And it's not like them. he can call up his competitor and ask where do they where get do them. Where do you get them, right. So, but anyway, that's my little kitchen hack 
for you guys because I really like being able to have the little more control over the pouring of them and this works out really great. Yeah, when you're so. pouring the bottle and you know it's not inexpensive but it is delicious and, and you get too much it, it once it's out of the bottle you can't put it back right. it just, and, and, and you get too much on the salad and then you I don't, you stir a lot. Uh, we do have right. a question before sure, we move on to the next great. thing. Uh, Patricia is asking uh, when we go out to eat mm -hmm. what kind of container do we use for our salad dressings? Uh, she doesn't have um, she doesn't have, she hasn't found one that doesn't leak. Oh. So we used to well, take I, a, t uh, with the creamy balsamic, you had a. So the, in like at Target or Walmart, any place that carries like the canning jars, the ball jars, they make a little one that's about, I think it's four ounces and it has, you know, a plastic screw on lid that comes with it. And I think you get four of those in it comes as a little set and so I used to take our creamy balsamic dressing and I would put it in one of those because that was enough for two of us so if we went to let's say like Whole Foods and we would get each get a big salad and then we would split that little jar of our dressing and I would just put it down inside of a baggie you know and zip it closed and put it in my purse and I never had it never leaked I never had any trouble with that. And now we, what we do is we take the vinegars with us because Thomas at California Balsamic has these three ounce little bottles that they're uh, plastic. They have a lid that pops up and it does a little squirt. It has a tiny little hole in it. And so that's what we take with us now and you know I know I'm mentioning his name a lot we don't have any affiliation with him I just want to point that out but we just really love his company and we love his product and uh, him and his wife just do an excellent job so so we just ordered some of his three ounce bottles and then when we run out of vinegars and we reorder we reorder the big bottles and then we just keep refilling those three ounce bottles and I take those in my purse and I take them in my lunch box because I don't like to put the vinegar on my salad until right before I'm going to eat it. And those fit nicely in my lunch box as well. And they they never leak, which follow, is really wonderful. A follow up question from Patricia on the first containers you mentioned that we put the, the homemade creamy balsam mix in? Yeah. Was that a glass or a plastic? It was a glass. It's a glass jar. It's like the canning jars, but it's it's just little. It's if we see this is the problem doing this out here. I can't run to the You're pantry about those and get a tiny like what you might call a jam jar. No, they're no? smaller. The, the short ones. They're about this tall. Okay. And I think they're only four. I think they're four ounces actually, and they might be on our Amazon page. If not, I'll have Tom add them to our Amazon page. So, And then when we're done with this video, and it won't be tonight because we have another event to go to, but tomorrow I'll put um, uh, links in the, in the description area about anything we discuss here. Yes, yeah. that's very helpful. So they're made, they're glass, but they do come with a plastic lid. And I think they were made by the Ball Canning Jar Company. And I bought them, I think I bought them at Target. I think is where I got them, and I believe that I think four came. Oh, Patricia's to a in Canada, box. so she has trouble getting the vinegar up there with the, in those bottles. Well, yeah. you know, we were just talking to Thomas, and he was telling us that he can actually ship for six dollars as long as it's under a pound. It's six dollars to ship to Canada, and so he said that makes it affordable for people if they want to get the three ounce bottles. And so if you get you you could get you know, four, five, five of the three ounce bottles. It would be under a pound. Yeah. And it would be under a pound, and then it would be six dollars. You have to for packaging too. Okay, so, well anyway, you could call him or you can send him an email and ask him about that, because he was just telling us that he's discovered that in one of those pouches that he can ship those three ounce bottles to Canada for six dollars. So that's pretty reasonable shipping actually. So you would be able to try some of them. And I know that some of our other subscribers are able to get some flavored vinegars in Canada. So here's what you do. You, if you search for a vinegar shop, you probably won't find them. But a lot of people that sell 
the premium olive oils and they have a standalone olive oil shop, the half of the store will be olive oils and half will be vinegar. We don't recommend with our eating lifestyle to spend a lot of time in the olive aisle, <laughs> in the olive oil aisle. Right. But, but that's where you're going to find the really balsamic. nice yeah. balsamic vinegars. So look that up. And if anyone else is watching who lives in Canada, and if you know the name of any of the shops that sell flavored balsamic vinegars, if you could put that in the comment section, that would be really helpful. And I can ask on our Facebook page too for any of our Canadian followers if they could help us out and let us know where they're getting their vinegars from. Yeah, um, folks in Canada are actually a good percentage of our subscriber our, base. They you are. Know, our, our, our top countries, top four are U.S., of course, and then Canada, and then Australia, and then United Kingdom, mm -hmm. I think, in that order. Right. So. Um, and we love the Canadians. They're so friendly. We visited a couple <laughs> years ago. We had such a good time. What are you laughing at? What did somebody say? Nothing. Oh, Nothing. if you're laughing at me, he's laughing at me. All of your subscribers are friendly. I know they are. We have we well they say yeah. We do, we have we do have the nicest people. We really do. Okay, I it's have awesome. one person with a uh, frozen screen. Um, oh, it looks like we did freeze. Okay, let me check. Let me do a refresh. Let me check the phone. I don't know why it's doing that. Frozen. 